Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant asked the White House for clarifications regarding a possible Saudi nuclear program during a meeting held in New York this week. Saudi Arabia has reportedly asked the U.S. to green light its development of a civilian nuclear program as part of its terms to normalize relations with Israel. I sat down with Gulf expert Dr. Yoel Gozhansky from Israel's Institute of National Security Studies to hear more on the dilemma that that may reshape the face of the region in the coming years. Let's watch. Dr. Yoel Gozhansky, senior researcher at the NSS, formerly with the Prime Minister's Office, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank so you. now the buzzword or the buzz nation in this region is Saudi Arabia and its possible peace accord, normalization accord with Israel. What's in it for Israel I can understand? What's in it for Saudi Arabia? Oh, well, that's a good question. I think they come from a different, uh, different angle or different motivation uh, than Israel. For Saudi Arabia, as as long as I can assess, the primary motivation is not to do normalization with Israel, but to get the benefits on the sidelines from uh, a third party, and that is the Americans. Uh, and and as, as you mentioned, the buzzword is Saudi Arabia, and the buzzword was also what the Saudis' uh, carrots might be uh, in return for normalization uh, uh, with Israel. So for them, the normalization is not just not first on the agenda, not even second or third, but it also might be uh, uh, a challenge. In what way? Well, the, the Saudi public, uh, as far as I can assess it, from surveys that we uh, make and, and other and, uh, analysis is not ready yet for full scope normalization with Israel, even in the model of, of the Abraham Accords uh, and, and the, the, the so-called peace accord that we have with the Emiratis. This is part of the reason why I think it will be in a different model with the Saudis, tailor-made to their sensitivities and challenges in, within the kingdom and outside the kingdom. Don't forget they're the custodian of two whole places of Islam. They have to listen, or 1.5 billion uh, Muslims listen to them and watch what they do. So there's a lot of sensitivities in, 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 in what they do, and they're aware of that. They check the ground all kinds of ways. By, by the way, the Abraham Accords are like a trial balloon for them especially the relations with Bahrain, which is very close to Saudi Arabia. So they check the ground. They do what I call in, in recent years a creeping normalization, uh, a very gradual but slow normalization with Israel. Mainly business. Mainly business, mainly economic. Defense, absolutely. Technology. A little bit defense on, on the sidelines, but quiet. But you see even, even public things, uh, more and more Israelis with foreign passports or without go to Saudi Arabia, Israeli planes go over Saudi uh, airspace. Uh, you see even uh, meetings of former Saudi officials with former Israeli officials. You see all kinds of gestures, very small ones. Uh, uh, but this, this is what I call the gradual normalization. One of its goals is to prepare this Saudi population, which is not accustomed to Israelis, and, and still, uh, let's say... very religious and conservative. Very, very conservative. Uh, you're absolutely right. Very conservative and, and, and also pro-Palestinians in many ways, more than we think. So you spoke about benefits, or as you called it before, carrots. Mm -hmm. Main, many three issues. A, nuclear. Mm -hmm. B, uh, uh, a defense treaty with the U.S. Mm -hmm. and see weaponary, um, a large uh, uh, list, including the, the most advanced ones, F-35s and others. Looking from the outside as, as, as an expert, define the three and say what you and maybe Israel or the West should think about all of the above. I'll, I'll start from the easy uh, or uh, less challenges for, for Israel. Uh, a defense treaty of sort uh, I'm not sure the Americans will give him NATO-style uh, defense treaty with Chapter 5 in it. Maybe India-style. Maybe India-style, but I'm, I'm skeptical that NATO-style will, will, because of the... Look, uh, the Saudis are still persona non grata in, in, in Washington. He's persona non grata in Washington. There's a lot of resentment 
mainly in the Democratic Party. Mainly in the Democratic Party, in the progressive uh, area, because of Khashoggi, because of Yemen, because of human rights. This is not, we, we're not uh, done with that. But they will get some sort of a defense treaty. Uh, what most interests them is Iran, some sort of uh, assurances towards Iran. The second thing, uh, and this is, I think, Israel doesn't have a problem with that, vice versa. Uh, on the contrary, I think uh, if the U.S. is binding itself stronger to, to an ally in the Middle East, That's good for Israel. it's good for Israel and will be more present here, perhaps, stuff like that. The second thing, as you mentioned, is the conventional arms deal uh, of, of enormous magnitude, as I hear, uh, what the Saudis want. What the Emiratis got, they want more, obviously, because they're the Saudis. And they will get more. It's not just the F-35, all kinds of drones, sophisticated missiles, etc., etc. Here, Israel will have to get some sort of compensation from the U.S., and the talks are already on way. To keep the QME. To keep the QME and, and, and to get uh, the procedure. You, you know it better than, than, than everyone what the, what the procedure is. And, uh, and the talks are, as I hear, are already on the way. The third and perhaps most problematic issue is the nuclear. The Saudis demand for a decade now. It's not new. And, and I wrote about it before, and I wrote about it a few times now, warning about it. They want an entire nuclear fuel cycle in Saudi Arabia, reprocessing, enriching the entire shebang. That's, that's a problem. It's a problem in so many ways. You erode the taboo on enrichment. Other countries will come and say, oh, the Emiratis, they gave up enrichment a decade ago in order to get the help to build their nuclear infrastructure. Now I hear voices in, in the UAE saying, oh, okay, maybe we'll open up uh, the agreement because we got uh, bad, bad deals, bad terms. We want a better deal. For a local enrichment. For local enrichment, yeah, maybe we'll do that. Uh, so it might open a Pandora box here in, in the region. It might also affect Iran. Iran would see, oh, the Saudis have a nuclear and enrichment in the U.S. Oh, maybe we should advance ours. Very problematic. Very, very problematic. Uh, and, and what do you answer to those you who say that if the Americans won't give them that, so the, the Chinese or the French or others will? Theoretically, it's true. And this is what the, the Americans are trying to sell, by the way. Uh, and Biden is telling uh, senators and the Congress, look, we have to give them that because they'll go otherwise. There's a lot of truth in that. I, as a researcher of Saudi Arabia for more than 20 years, I, uh, uh, it's better than the Americans uh, go to Saudi Arabia. They can uh, look inside, inspect, and even, you know, some curb some potential uh, Saudi, uh, uh, let's say, aspiration to go nuclear uh, in the future. So it's good that the Americans are there, but it, in what price? It's not that easy for the Saudis to go with the Chinese. They prefer the American technology. They prefer the American uh, legitimacy for nuclear. So they waited for the Americans for more than a decade. They all, all the time, they threat that they will go with China, but not so easy. They want American and technology. And not on that issue. And not on that issue, because the price that if they will go with China, they will pay a high price uh, in relation with the US. It, it will be a done deal and they don't want to break the relations with the U.S., so it's not that easy. But that's one, only one thing, it, looking from Israel. The second thing is that it, we are demolishing the, the begging doctrine, which, which says no power, in, no, no, no nation in the Middle East will have such a power. We remember the Iraqi case, the Syrian case, currently the Iranian case, and Israel comes at the same time and says to the Saudis, okay, you can have it. Yes and no, because first of all, uh, it's a civilian nuclear uh, program. Which enables at the end which to go, enables at the to end go to military. Dual use and in, in the future perhaps. By the way, one of the dangers is that, you know, they, they dub it now, they call it uh, nuclear Aramco. What's the problem with nuclear Aramco? That the Saudis can do what they did with the former oil Aramco is, is nationalize it and tell the Americans in the future, okay, leave. Please leave. It's ours. That's one of the dangers uh, in, in a program like, uh, uh, like that. So, but it's not exactly bearing, begging doctrine, but, uh, but I hear and I agree, it's a problem. And Saudi Arabia is not the only country. What would Israel do if other friendly countries that we cooperate with quietly, Egypt, the table, Turkey, yeah. and others, yeah, even Jordan is talking about that, and, and the UAE and others, will uh, go the nuclear path. 
it's a, it's a huge dilemma for Israel. What is it? Does, does it uh, uh, kinetically do, maybe curvately trying to? Uh, do, a huge dilemma. It's not just countries that are friendly to Israel, they're also pro American regimes. And what do you do against uh, U.S. interests or against the U.S. wish? Big problem. So you spoke about you know uh, MBS looking at the pro and cons and says I'll I'll try to get out as much as I can out of it and looking give as less as I can. Look from the American angle. Looking from the American angle, they're trying you know anxiously to reach that because Biden is anxious to reach something before he goes into elections. What's in it for Israel? Obviously, on one side, huge gain by money, contracts, uh, 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 peace or normalization with the biggest, most influential state in the in the arena. On the contrary, you spoke nuclear, military, etc. That's a big dilemma. Absolutely, I, you, you just put it. You just you gave the answer, and you also uh, answered it yourself. Big, big dilemma. Look. Uh, uh, some of the rulers in the Gulf now, it's not just Mohammed bin Salman, it's also Mohammed bin Zayed, also Sheikh Tamim of Qatar, their aspiration of leading in the region. Uh, look, the entire Arab world is moving to the Gulf. This is, this is the new Arab world. It, it's been led by uh, those three rulers from the Gulf with a lot of aspiration to lead uh, the region and to lead the Arab world and the Muslim world. And they also want the best weapons, uh, the nuclear infrastructure, by the way, he wants the nuclear infrastructure also to get uh, strategically even with Iran, to, to give some sort of an answer to, ir to, to the Iran program, but also it's a lot to do with prestige and standing in the Arab world. Oh, okay, so, so Mohammed bin Zayed have for 10 years already uh, a nuclear... Uh, so I'll have more and bigger. I'll have more and bigger. And this is the only way you can advance uh, uh, and beyond uh, Mohammed bin Zayed. So a lot of prestige, a lot of... Uh, those calculation in here and it's problematic uh, for Israel and you just put it on the table I think we need to look carefully here and I wrote it before and I'll say it again if the piece of price is not high too too high in this case we need to give a lot and it's not clear what exactly we will get it's true that the Saudi our custodian of two holy places and perhaps other countries will join Muslim countries like Indonesia and other countries in Africa will join and Saudi Arabia is the biggest economy in the region and there's a lot of economic benefits but everything is on paper we, you first give all the things to the Saudis and get and then hope to get something uh, from the Saudis and it's not clear for me who's someone who researches for so long what is that what something? exactly would, will we get my guess is that we will get less, by the way, than what we get with, uh, with the Emiratis because of those sensitivities that we spoke about. Yoel Gozhansky, a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you.